So the first time I read Plan B, I was overwhelmed with the level of um, environmental degra degradation that we are experiencing in the world. And then when I read Plan B 2.0, which I was able to read segments of um, very recently, I was so hopeful because I felt like there were so many solutions and there's so many ways that we can turn everything around. Can you briefly explain what Plan A is and then also explain Plan B 2.0? The fossil fuel-based automobile centered throwaway economy is not going to work for China. If it doesn't work for China, it won't work for India, which by 2031 will have an even larger population. Nor will it work for the other three, bil three billion people in the developing countries who are also dreaming the American dream. And in an increasingly integrated global economy where we all depend on the same oil, grain, steel, it won't work for us either. That's the principal finding of this book. We're going to have to restructure the global economy, uh, shift to a, an economy that's largely powered by renewable sources of energy, that has a much more diversified transport system, and that comprehensive, comprehensively reuses and recycles everything. Um, we see glimpses of the new economy now emerging around the world. We see it in the wind farms of Western Europe, the solar rooftops of Japan, the growing fleet of hybrid cars in the United States, the reforestation of South Korea, the bicycle-friendly streets of Amsterdam. We can see the new economy coming, but it's not coming fast enough. What other technologies are really appealing to you at this point in time? I mean, if there are two industries in the world that we could dispense with are not that important, but making a huge difference environmentally. It would be gold mining and, and bottled water. Bottled water in industrial countries. There are places in the world where you might need, need some bottled water, but spending on bottled water, the amount we spend could easily bring clean water to people everywhere. I mean, so these are extraordinarily wasteful, both of them. I mean, we only produce worldwide. The last time I looked, it was like 22,000 tons of gold per year. 22,000 tons. But the amount of ore that we process and things we move around is comparable to that for the 800 million tons of steel that we produce. I mean, it's extraordinary. And the value of the two, there's no comparison. Um, and with bottled water, I mean, the industry has done a con job on the American public. I mean, designer bottled water, you know, paying more for it than we pay for gasoline or for milk. It's a huge waste of energy and resources. There's another reader who posed the question, I love the book Eco-Economy, Building an Economy for the Earth. And she said she's been passing the title on to friends, family, and coworkers, and everyone feels that it's eye-opening. Beyond sharing or suggesting books and information, what can someone do to really get others involved in the issues of sustainability, energy alternatives, and community? What we're really talking about here is saving our early 21st century civilization because we're on an economic path now that is not environmentally sustainable. And saving civilization is not a spectator sport. We all have to get involved because we all have a stake in it. One of the most effective things is to find a group of like-minded people and develop some positions on climate change, for example, things that you think Congress should be doing. Mm -hmm. And when your congressperson comes to the district, ask for a group meeting. What do you think about the, the sort of um, new breed of environmentalism that we're seeing? It has to involve not just a small segment of society, but it has to really reach a point where everyone understands that we have a stake in, in and, and where we are all environmentalists, basically.